Welcome back to my channel. I am your favorite mother of three bougie vintage and today's video is the fourth part of my sister the Tasmanian devil. So I took you through parts one to three. If you're new here, hi. If you're a member, double hi. And if you are unaware of what the heck I'm talking about, Girl, go watch parts one, two, and three, and then come back. So boom, Richard is gone, okay? He is gone with the one fabulous, is giving Kenya more. He's out of here. And we couldn't be happier. She couldn't be happier. And just as a side note, literally, he got, he almost got kicked out of the hotel that he was staying at for the night once he got dropped off in Niagara Falls because he was being belligerent and ignorant to the hotel staff because there must have been a mix up with the room my sister booked or they were saying that there was nothing booked there or something like that. I said, I said, nah. And so he's calls her freaking out or whatever and she has to like, you know, calm him down because he's doing too much. And so he calls and she's literally like, listen, I am back in Ottawa, okay? <laughs> uh, you can't be acting like this at the hotel and you're supposed to be staying there. Like, I'll, I'll call, I'll fig get it figured out for you, blah, blah, blah. But obviously his attitude and his behavior is stemming from the fact that he does not want to go back to his mama and he has no choice or he feels like he's not been given a choice. So for the first few days after she finally got rid of him, every time I saw my sister, she would be doing a praise dance, okay? Like she would just be doing the most. She's just dancing and emphasizing and dancing and emphasizing and like super duper happy that she got rid of Richard. It was a key, okay? I'm happy for her, she's happy, things are great. So I would say for at least a week, things were just as they were as Richard was in town. So when Richard was here, my life did not change at all. Like the only thing that was really changed was that extra people were in my home, but that was it. Once Richard left, obviously my sister decided she was time to be on go mode. <laughs> So for like a week, things were pretty chill and okay. The only difference now was that Richard was gone. And unfortunately for me, this was gonna be short lived. Prior to moving into this home in 2020, my mom and I had pretty much spent the last three years together. Though she was not living with me, we were together all the time because she would be helping me as I work from home. As you can imagine, we have gotten pretty close. <laughs> I can't really put my relationship with my mom into words for you guys, but our dynamic is just a vibe. And like you guys actually got to see a little bit of it. You guys have been seeing bits and pieces of it over the years, but like we pretty much are attached at the hip. Uh, we have a really sweet relationship and um, a really real relationship and like I know that I can go to my mom about anything and my mom knows she can come to me about anything in that I know that I can also say anything to her without it being an issue there's no sensitivity there and we can joke together and we can laugh together we do that 99% of the time that's what we're doing <laughs> I can go to my mama and talk to her about her ex-husband and she can come to me and talk to me about mine and it's a key you know like we have a good time we joke, we laugh, it is what it is. So of course, at nighttime, once I put my kids to sleep, a lot of the time, right after I do that, I'll just head over to my mom's quarters and we will chop it up. We'll talk about the day, we'll talk about yesterday, we'll talk about a show, we might watch a show together, Married at First Sight, uh, 90 Day Fiance, this has been going on for years, okay? So like, that's just what it has been. My mom is literally like my best friend and she's my wise counsel. So like if I am like unsure of something and I've prayed about it, I will go to her, talk to her about it, and usually I get my confirmation through her. So when my sister first got here, obviously we are all inclusive, okay? <laughs> so we were like telling her, after you put the kids to sleep, come, like come hang out with us, try to invite her into our little thing that we have going on because why not? She's my sister. Why wouldn't we invite her in? My mom literally, as you guys, have been proven to does not have a favorite so we were inviting my sister into the room and telling her to come hang out with us and you know be a part of the family <laughs> but she would always have an excuse as to why she couldn't come and 99% of the time it would be using her children as the excuse as to why she couldn't come keep in mind this was happening even when Richard was there 
So like we would be congregating in my mom's room and we would tell my sister, come once the kids are sleeping and my sister would not come or she would come for like five minutes and then say she has to go back to the, her room. So because it's bedtime, we're like, how could that be the excuse? But she was saying like, she can't even get out of the bed. If she gets out of the bed, they're like sleepers. They're gonna know she's gone. It's a problem. And so I'm thinking, well, this is when you get to training your kids to sleep in their own beds so that they can get used to it. Because that's what I did child. If all three of my kids were still in my bed, that would be highly problematic, especially when you are still married, like, your kids really shouldn't be in your bed for an extended period of time. Train them kids, get them out of your bed or they're never gonna get out. So with Nola, I started sleep training her early girl. I knew she wasn't gonna sleep in the crib. So I started sleeping her in a big girl bed almost immediately. Like when I would put her to sleep at night, I would nurse her over in her sister's room. <laughs> Cause there's two beds in there, but Salem and Bellamy like to sleep in the same bed. So because of the extra bed, I would just sleep on that bed with Nola. Well, not sleep, but I would put Nola to sleep on that bed. And so I started sleep training her early. So Nola sleeps over there, okay? Nola is not, I have my bed to myself, okay? <laughs> when I had a man and now I don't have a man, I still got my bed to myself, okay? As a matter of fact, when I had a man, I still have my bed to myself, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> so my point is she wasn't working on sleep training them, though she did have the room to do it and she had beds for them, but she wasn't putting them in their beds to sleep at night. And so we're like encouraging her to do so. It was always like, yeah, we can't do this. And the kids would wake up crying. And I need you guys to remember this detail. I need you to remember the detail that she was swearing up and down that she could not come and hang out with us in the room because the children would get up and she could not stay out of the bed, okay? Please, please, I am begging you to remember this detail. So other times we would offer her wine and to just come out and hang and it was, oh, I don't drink wine, I don't drink, I'm a vodka girl. Okay, there's a rock in the cover too, sis. Then it's, oh, I don't uh, like the way alcohol makes me feel like, I don't even like to feel tipsy, I feel like I'm not in control. Red flag. When she said, of course you don't, you, of course you don't wanna feel like you're out of control. But I'm saying red flag now because the controlling thing, we'll get there when we get there. But I wish I was listening better because having a drink at home with your mom and your sister after the kids are sleeping, you know, whether it's wine, whether it's vodka, whatever you're having. You shouldn't even be thinking about not being in control. We're not going out partying. Like what? What? We're not partying. We're not getting belligerently drunk. We're not getting drunk at all. We're not even getting bossed, girl. <laughs> like what is going on? But perhaps it, but that's neither here nor there. So when we saw that she was making those kinds of excuses, we were like, okay, well, you don't need a drink to come and hang out with us. Like that's not necessary okay we just want to hang out with you still nothing but still nothing and so at that point not to say that we gave up offering her to come and hang out with us but like if she did she did if she didn't she didn't we weren't gonna make a big stink about it a big deal about it we just took it for what it was the only reason we really found it odd was because any of my other sisters would be down for the cause especially if they were visiting short term long term whatever it is do you want to have a drink with us do you wanna hang out with us? Do you wanna watch the show with us? They would be like, hell yeah. <laughs> and they would come and hang out and we would laugh and just have a good time. But there was a resistance there for whatever reason. So every morning when we get up, the kitchen is really the place that we cross paths the most, me and my sister. So all of the kids would be up, her kids, my kids, we're setting up breakfast for each family, really just mapping out how the day is gonna go. Usually that was pretty much what I'm gonna be doing for the day because obviously I work from home. My sister, as you guys know, didn't need to work. Uh, she really was just supposed to be taking care of her two special needs children and that's a lot of work in itself. So she just was supposed to be focusing on that and she was getting her full salary, yada, yada, yada. You guys already know that stuff. So pretty much when we were mapping up the day, we were just saying like, what we're gonna be doing if her kids and my kids were gonna be hanging out with my mom in the basement, whatever the case may be. Keep in mind, I'm still pregnant. Cause my sister's man was gone, finally, and you know, the, I guess, ecstasy 
of her first coming to visit had pretty much simmered. It was time for me to get back to work because I wasn't really like super duper focused. I was taking some time to um, spend with her and get adjusted with them being in the space and just, you know, living my life. And also I was pregnant, so things were changing and changing fast, but like uh, I needed to get ready to finish out my work month because my baby was due very soon. Prior to Tasmanian moving in, my work week was generally a five day work week and then I would take two days off. Those two days that I took off would be, obviously my mom would be off on those days as well and whatever she wanted to do with her two days, she was allowed to do with her two days. Me, I would obviously be with my kids or I would use it to run errands because these were the only two days that my vehicle was home at this time because my ex was home as well. So these were his two days off. So it's everybody's day off on these two days because this is really the only days that I can get anything done outside of the house because the other days my ex would be taking the vehicle to work. At this time, like I just said, we were scheduling everything around my ex's schedule because he worked outside of the home and so that's just what made most sense until it didn't. Another story for another day. <laughs> that was pretty much the dynamic. Now, since we were scheduling everything around my ex, once my sister moved in, it actually looked a little better because there were two cars now. We had access to my sister's vehicle when mine was not there, and this was great. So having access to my sister's car meant that we didn't have to wait until my ex was off to do grocery shopping or run any kind of errands. It was essentially really convenient. Matter of fact, when I was buying my Durango, I actually didn't want to trade in my other car because I thought or felt like we did need two vehicles. I knew that if my ex was taking the car to work, which was 40 minutes from home, that we would be stranded and we have the kids. And I'm also pregnant, like it was just, and close to my due date, so like, it just was not the ideal situation. And we had just gotten the truck right before my sister had come as well. Now, my sister's car was older and it didn't have a backup camera. And so I wasn't really the most comfortable driving it, but if I had to, I did. Otherwise, we would just go together. My sister would drive, I was in the passenger seat. My mom would stay at home with the baby. Shortly before Richard left, I had given birth to Nola. So Richard was still in town once I gave birth to Nola. So now I'm a mom of three, I'm readjusting and I'm taking some time off of work, but like I get bored really easily and I cannot sit still <laughs> and not work. Like it's problematic. I don't know, like I, d I don't even, I can't, and especially because of the type of work that I do, I can't just be sat there not bringing in any income um, and living off of baby bonus. Like that's just not my cup of tea. I don't want to do it. I don't like it. I just don't want to do it. So I prefer to work. I prefer to work, and that's just what it was for me. Is for me. So that being said, again, my sister was still <laughs> collecting her full salary and taking care of her children. And so because of these two situations, uh, both mental health and her children situation, they had actually secured her another three years of leave fully paid. We were super duper happy for her because we knew and we were seeing how stressful it was raising her children and how much help she did need with them. And so we were happy for her that she's now getting to, she doesn't have to worry about going back to work she has another three years to spend to teach her children everything that she can, and then obviously getting the help of um, autism support so that she can get her kids into whatever therapies that they need to get into so that they can be fully developed and ready for school and yada, yada, yada. A lot of moms that do have autistic children can't afford to stay home and take care of their kids because they have to go to work. So we were like, oh my God, like you're so blessed. Like me and my mom were telling her, like this is such a blessing. So uh, we thought that she knew that it was a blessing, girl. <laughs> Apparently she didn't. Earlier I was talking about how my mom and I are super close and because of that closeness, obviously there's a big trust factor there. I can trust my mom with anything, she can trust me with anything. This also includes 
money, okay? So um, I can spend her money, she can spend my money, and nobody is going to be, you know, feeling like you owe me money and you didn't pay it back. I owe you money and I'm not paying it back. Like, it's just never that. The money's always there, right? So that's the kind of trust that we have. You gotta trust somebody a lot to let them play with your money, okay? <laughs> and that's the relationship that my mother and I have. So, being that mom has no favorite, this is pretty much where things started to take a left turn. But because she has no favorite, she entrusted my sister the same way she entrusts me where the money was concerned. I don't really have to say too much, but you watch these court shows, you know how this went. <laughs> you know how this is about to go. But like, to the to which level is what we are gonna have to dig into because it's unfathomable, okay? <laughs> so, before we get into that, I just wanna touch on what was happening or what happened when my sister first arrived. Because when she first arrived, she was sharing with us all of the things that come along with autism and all the supports that come along with autistic um, children and what kind of grants and government uh, supplements there are for her. And she doesn't have not one, but two autistic children. So it's looking like a lot of money. My sister's car, due that it was a little bit older, she had paid it off a while back. And so she didn't have a car note. At that point, we didn't know really if she had any debts, but she had claimed she didn't have any debts. So as far as we knew, she had no debts and money was straight and money was great. So Betsy, her car, Betsy was falling apart, but she was still drivable, okay? And that's why I didn't really like to drive her because I drove her one time, I went up the road to Shoppers Drug Mart and I said, mm-mm, child, I ain't finna drive this car again. I I'm gonna wait till this man gets home with my car to use the vehicle to go do what I need to do because I was driving her car and like, I tapped my foot on the gas and the car went boom, like, <laughs> what is going on here and then the brakes I said no ma'am I can't drive this car it's I'm not comfortable in it at all so that's pretty much what happened with me driving her car and I don't want to be responsible for anybody's car either insurance or no insurance that being said my sister pretty much seemed to have her affairs in order I mean my car won't paid off but it was brand new it was a 2020 <laughs> it wasn't paid off her car's paid off you know she's creating the you know facade that her life is structurally and financially together. I think it was a collective idea among our entire family, so not just myself and my mom, but myself, my mom, and other sisters. We've always viewed this sister in particular as the responsible one. She was the one with the government job. She was the one that graduated early from high school and like went off to college, has these degrees. She's the most successful sister, so to speak, you know. Um, she appears to be the smartest sister. We've always kind of just regarded her that way. Out of everybody, she's always had a car. Oh, she got her license first. Like she, she just was always making sure that she appeared put together. And obviously that paid off for her because we saw her that way. And so this brings me back to why everybody was so shocked and appalled at the guy that she was bringing home because it, was not on brand. And so everybody's looking at her sideways and questioning her. And when we did get to questioning her, she was like, okay, but that's how, um, that's how you guys viewed me. That's not necessarily what it is. And then everybody's like to her, no, that's not how we viewed you. That's how you presented yourself. So this is looking a little crazy, which was actual factual. And again, if you're lost on that, please reference the Bachelorette story, uh, the Bachelorette Party from Hell, I think it's called. Go see that if you haven't seen that. First of all, if you're this far into this video and you haven't seen that video, that's the video you need to watch before you even watch part one, two, and three. <laughs> so head over there, watch that, and then you'll understand what I'm talking about with the guy. Now. I said all that to say that in the first two weeks that my sister had arrived to town, with Richard, of course, still here, she had maxed not one, but two of my mom's credit cards. One of the cards that she maxed, obviously I'm not gonna tell y'all what the limit is, but it's very high. So high, you actually sit and think, how does one spend that amount of money in two weeks? <laughs> 
and they just got here. And when that happened, I remember my mom coming to me and telling me how much was left on there. And I said, what? Like, it didn't make sense to me. I said, what? I said, are you gonna say something? And she's like, she's just waiting to see what is happening because she's like, there's no way she would spend that money and not be able to put it back. Because when she arrived and I'm not sure if my mom offered her to use the cards or if she came to my mom and asked my mom to use the cards because when she left her city to move here, she got rid of pretty much everything she owned. She came here with next to nothing. She came here with stuff for the kids, like sensory items for the kids, her the clothes that she had, some of her arts and crafts stuff. And that was pretty much it. Like she didn't have much of anything when she came. Like actually everything that she had pretty much fit in her car. And also um, she borrowed her dad's uh, like hitch on the back of his truck. So a very small thing. She didn't get a moving truck, nothing like that. Um, she borrowed his car to bring whatever she was bringing. There was already a bed here, so she didn't need that. There was already TV, she didn't bring that. So like, there was no big ticket items that she was bringing. She didn't bring any furniture, nothing like that. So when she got here, of course, she, and she was deciding she's going to buy new everything. And so that obviously included furniture. And so she was using my mom's card to buy furniture, to buy this and that, to make her living quarters livable which was completely understandable. But even in that, all those things did not, all the things that she purchased, especially when most of them were coming from like HomeSense, they did not accumulate <laughs> to what the max, maxing the card. And my mom is very good with her cards. So she does not, and I don't, cause I use the cards too sometimes. We don't use it past a certain amount because if anything happens where we can't afford to pay for it or something, what the hell we gonna do? What the hell we gonna do? <laughs> so we always, you know, you keep it under a very, you keep it manageable, you know? We ain't never seen it max now, girl. And not one, but two cards. So at the time, we didn't know that the second card was maxed because I actually don't use the other card. But when my mom came to me the first time, after the first two weeks, and told me that there's only X amount of dollars left on the card, not even enough to buy AirPods Max, girl. Like, she maxed that card. She was swiping like penny damn proud, okay? So, so she maxed this card. When my mom tells me, I said, I'm looking at her sideways. I said, are you gonna say something? She's like, well, you know, she's getting all these things. She's she's always talking about she's, what she's getting back on her taxes, all this stuff. So she's always saying she has the money coming, blah, blah, blah. So my mom wasn't worried about it at first because when she came, because she wanted to use the cards for furniture or whatever she was buying and ridiculous shopping trips to Tanger every damn week. <laughs> when she was doing that, she told my mom she's gonna take care of my mom's card for her. Please remember that because this is a part of the narcissism, the master manipulation. So she's telling her, don't worry, I got you. I'm gonna take care of the, your cards for you, blah, blah, blah. Because she knew I was already doing that. So she really didn't need to, but her offering to take care of my mom's credit card bill, because obviously my mom's a senior, <laughs> Her offering to take care of my mom's credit card bill and I'm taking care of my mom's credit card bill. This is a win for my mom, okay? She has two of her daughters. She has her second oldest and her baby, me, paying off her credit card because obviously we're using the card. So as a perk, we just pay the whole thing. So like she has two kids paying her bill for her. It takes stress off of her plate. Duh, you know, but my mom's not frivolous with her card anyway. So like she really didn't. My mom never needed me to pay her credit card bill off. She didn't really need that. But it was just something that I did as on top of paying her for childcare. And obviously, like I said, I benefited from it too. I benefited from using the card. Like if I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna pay it, you know? When my sister gets here and she's telling my mom like, I'm gonna pay it off for you, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna make sure I keep paying it, blah, blah, blah. My mom has no reason to not trust her at that point. So fast forward, my mom doesn't say anything, of course. And so me and my mom are talking about the credit card situation. And I said, look, mom, I was already using that card before she came. And 
I use it for certain purchases. It can be work related. I use it for certain things and I only use it if I really need to, but I didn't want our transactions to get jumbled. So the maxing of the cards obviously made my mom uneasy because that's not how she generally uses her cards. At that point, she was like, you know what? I don't want you both using the cards at the same time at that. Um, so what I am going to propose is that she has one of my cards, you have the other card, and that way it's easier to manage. Like you can manage that card and she can manage the other card because I was already, I already stated I don't use the other card. You can manage that card, she can manage that card, and then nobody's transactions are getting jumbled because I don't want it to be like you used it here and then she used it there and then we don't know whose transaction is who and there's mix up, like we don't wanna do anything like that. That's a little too much and I don't wanna be in any kind of crazy mess. So you take that card that you're already using, she's gonna take that other card that she's using and that's gonna be the end of that. And I was like, perfect, because I don't want the transactions mixed up either. So my mom says that, and then obviously I couldn't use the card because it was max. At that point, ain't nobody using the damn card. That being said, we fast forward, and surely enough, my sister does put money back onto the card. A good chunk of the money, but not the whole money. Keep in mind, interest okay and because the balance of the card is so high the interest is also you know whatever you spend the interest is gonna be had too okay like the interest percent is not high but because the balance is high whatever the interest is it still makes the interest high like the actual amount that you would pay interest it makes it high so she puts the money back but she tends to like round it instead of putting back exactly what she spent which with a credit card that doesn't make sense to do that's neither here nor there my mom was just happy that the amount that she spent was put back on the card and she could breathe now after that situation happened the first two weeks we're on guard but not really because we're made to feel now easy we were made to feel like okay she does have the money she's talking about and that is also part of the manipulation because who was to say that she didn't get like some one-time amount from the government or whatever that she's never getting again and she spent that money and put that money back on the card and this is not going to be a reoccurring thing but the way that she had made it seem was though she was going to have reoccurring money on top of her salary that she was getting from work so she was making it appear and making us feel comfortable where her money was concerned and the reason that affects me as well is because Remember she offered to pay half of the rent and I agreed. And of course, unbeknownst to me, that was gonna nip me in the ass later. <laughs> so things are fine. It's smooth sailing still guys. We're still, even though she spent the money and our eyebrows are raised, things are smooth sailing because the money has now been put back after like a week or something like that. She put the money back onto the card. Now we are starting to discuss like how things in the house are gonna work and what's easiest. So, at this point, we decide, let's just split everything down the middle from rent to bills to groceries. So what I, obviously all the bills are in my name. Once we split the bills down the middle, she'll pay half, I'll, my family will pay the other half, and then groceries, the same thing. We do one collective grocery shop and we split the Costco bill and the independent, but whatever bills we're splitting, we split it down the middle. These things were all fine at first. I found no issue with it. She had no issue with it either, at least not to me. <laughs> and so before things really took a left turn, my sister still had on her Joker face. She still had, was playing nice. Because she's playing nice and I'm not thinking anything of her being here, I'm happy she's here. She would come in my office and like get her nails done. And so I would be doing her acrylics at first. So one day I'm doing her acrylic nails and she was just treating it like any one of my other clients treat it. Like it's a safe space, you know, they come, they talk, <laughs> they spill the tea. And so my sister is talking to me about money and in this conversation, and you guys need to remember this as well, in this conversation, she starts telling me about a time she fell on hard times and her friend that she borrowed money from 
started hounding her for the money when her friend knew she didn't have it. Now, I was like, oh my God, I, like, I hate when people do something like that. Like, obviously I wouldn't have asked you to borrow the money if I, you know. And so I'm siding with my sister and all that. And so she's basically telling me how they fell out. And then, you know, now her and the friend are not friends because blah, yada, yada, yada. And so I'm like, that's typical, you know, it's normal, but she was really just planting a seed. And so we were talking in this conversation about how we're so glad, we are so glad, we are so glad that that would never be our situation because we said these exact words, if I know you have it and you know I have it, we don't need to bother each other about it, you know what I mean? Especially because we are officially deciding to split everything down the middle. Now, because we're splitting everything down the middle, if I was working and wasn't going grocery shopping and she went out and spent the money, we just would add the money to a list, right? So like, she might go to a uh, freaking independent and spend $50 and so she's gonna add 25 bucks to the list. And so instead of sending out multiple e-transfers for the day or the week, I would just let it pile up and then send her a lump sum, which was should be fine because we're talking in the office <laughs> about how we know each other has the money and like we don't need to hound each other for it, yada, yada, yada. And obviously, and if you don't have it, then you just say, hey, I ain't got it, you know? Can you please send me the money? <laughs> Y'all, 